Hey, this is Chris Menard. I've got wonderful news. I'm going to answer two questions in Microsoft Excel. The first one is from Wendy. Wendy wants to know, when she runs subtotals, how can you chart that information? So here we go. I have a header row in row one. It stops in row 36. I want to sort by state. So I'm going to click in column E. I'm going to go to the data tab and click on A to Z. So now all my states are in the correct order grouped together. The next step is over here to the right is the outline group. Click on the word subtotal. At each change in state, because that's what I just sorted by. Use function sum, and I'm going to sum up purchases to date. I'm going to move this over to the left. If you're wondering why I'm summing up purchases to date, it's the only numeric field that I have. Click on OK and watch what happens. Whenever you do subtotals, you get an outline. That's why the word subtotal is actually in the outline group. Here we go. If I scroll down, I've got a Georgia total. All the states have a total, so that's perfect. And then I got a grand total. Over in this outline, number one will show you the grand total. Perfect. Number two will show you the subtotals. Number three will expand everything again. I'm going to go back to number two. Look at the rows, row 1, row 14, 18. The other rows are hidden, so you click on the plus symbols. So it works like Windows Explorer. You're just expanding windows, expanding folders. Here's the issue, though. Wendy's in group 2, and she wants to chart this, but you can't chart it with those hidden rows. So you highlight this range, hold down the Control key, pick up this range, let go of the mouse, let go of Control, and then on the keyboard, I want you to do Alt semicolon. That will select only visible cells. Then you can do Alt F1 and there's your chart. If you wanted to use the mouse to go make the chart, feel free to. Uh, I'm gonna leave that just I'm gonna leave that there. I'm gonna go and now Bill had another question. This is actually a great question. Bill says he gets data like this all the time, and if you notice, this is all supposed to be that serial brand. This is supposed to be that one. I usually tell people, people usually tell me, why don't you just autofill it down? The answer is that would work, but if you have 48,000 rows of data and every two or three rows you have a new product ID, you could easily make a mistake. So there's a keyboard trick in Excel that you need to know. If you highlight a range and you type whatever you want to type and do control enter, it'll put whatever you typed in every selected cell. So now I'm going to select A2 down to the last empty cell that I want something in. On the keyboard, either Control G or the F5 function key will pull up the Go To box. Go to Special. You want to tell Microsoft Excel to only highlight the blanks. Watch what happens when I click OK over in column A. So only the blanks are selected, but A3 is active. I want A3 to look exactly like A2. So it's going to be equals A2. And this is why that control enter key comes into play. If you don't know it, this trick doesn't work. So control enter. And there I go. The last step, might as well do this right. I know A3 has got text in it, but it's actually a formula still. So it's simply a copy paste values. Click on it to make sure it's right and it's right. That's method one. That method works in any version of Excel, Windows or Mac, all the way back, I believe, to Excel 2002. The other method, so I did the same thing here. All these are supposed to be California. I could have done this method with column A also, but I wanted to show you both methods. Go to the data tab. This needs to be a table and not a range before I do it, but Excel will change this to a table for me. So I'm going to click From Table Range, click OK, and it's going to pull up the Power Query Editor. If you notice, there's all my information. Look at the State column. I'm going to right click on State, Point to Fill, Down. Good. To be honest with you, that was even easier. But that's not in every version of Excel. 
if you make a mistake while you're in this power query editor, let's say I wasn't supposed to do what I just did. There is no undo. You come over here to the right and because it'll keep remembering everything you do and I'm going to just click to say, no, I don't want to do that. But I actually do, so I'm going to do it one more time. Fill down. Matter of preference on this next step. I need to put this back into the Excel worksheet. I'm going to come up here to close and load. Close and load will put it exactly back where it came from. But I like to leave that information there as a check as a check figure. So I'm going to do a close and load to. It's going to ask me what worksheet do you want to put this on? I promise you it will. There it is. If you notice, I'm on this worksheet here. This bill second request and the next one says sorting three. Table, new worksheet. So I'm not changing anything. Click OK. Watch, new worksheet. There's everything corrected, but there's my original. It's in a table now, but that's still my original information right here. Anyway, Bill, Wendy, I hope you enjoyed that. Everyone else, I appreciate it. If you need training, let me know. Thank you.